You're listening to Nurture Your Zest. I'm your host, Ashley King, and I will introduce you to a wealth of interesting, fascinating individuals from all walks of life who will share their stories, how they've overcome challenges, and you will find out their top tips for success. Through this podcast, you can gain tips to grow and change your life and the way you see the world and help you to nurture your zest. Good evening. You're listening to Nurture Your Zest. I'm your host, Ashley King. And in this podcast, we talk about overcoming adversity, how through courage, creativity, and curiosity, you can find inspiration to nurture your zest. Tonight, I'm delighted to be joined by Gillian Fortune, who is a local lass, as we say, in the northeast of England from County Durham. Uh, She has her own uh, community interest company called Feel Good Kick. Uh, We'll hear all about that, what it's like for her being a no-nonsense stress buster and why she's uniquely qualified to be that. And her tips for uh, looking after yourself, practicing self-care and staying sane in these crazy times. So I'm delighted to now introduce you to Gillian. Um, So welcome this evening, Gillian. How are you doing? excellent which isn't what a lot of people say at the moment exactly well yes it isn't it is something not many people are saying at the moment but at the same time the positivity that you have is so important to help keep us uplifted so I'm so glad to hear that you are well and it's great to see you um so uh, before I launch into all my many questions can I ask you to introduce yourself I'm Gillian Fortune. My company is Feel Good CIC and I am a no-nonsense stress buster. Basically, what that means is I give people straightforward, practical and effective effective techniques to handle, I'm going to say stress, but also any kind of worry, anxiety or whatever life or work throws at them. I'm so glad that you clarified that for us because I was reading that and thinking, hmm, what does that even mean? So I'm glad you told us. So Gillian, what does you've told us what being a no-nonsense stress buster means, but why are you unique, uniquely qualified? What makes you able to comment on that? Well, oh, behind behind all of all of what I do, there's a lot of a lot of learning. And I've got pieces of paper. So I've got my degree in psychology and and I'm a neuro linguistic programming practitioner and um, qualified trainer. And I, and I do lots of things. So I've got lots of qualifications. But what I do is I, I take ideas to help people um, to take action. So what I do is uh, and I think this is the part that's unique. I teach action. So I'll give you an action to take to solve a problem, but I'll explain the neuroscience of what happens in your brain as to why this technique will work. But I honestly think what what makes me unique is I I keep everything simple. I keep everything straightforward and practical. Um, And honestly, I'm funny. I forget funny. Um, And I think that's what makes it work for me, keeping it it real, keeping it real. and and for me yeah it's it's that and and I've been through some stuff as well and got myself out the other side and I think that qualifies me more than anything to do what I do backed up by a lot of education as well and skills absolutely thank you so much so um why did you decide to set yourself up as a a kick of all different business models you could have chosen um and have you found this to be a helpful business model? Is it the right one for you? Yeah, I thought long and hard about it. Um, I used to be, uh, I used to run a council for voluntary services. So I've got a broad knowledge of different models um, for business. And because I had a lot of strong links in, in the volunteering community sector, and particularly in County Durham, um, I... I wanted to support a lot of people who were disadvantaged and a kick allows you to be in business, run a business model, but also um, support people who couldn't possibly buy your services. So for me, I support a lot of parents of children with mental health issues, 
um, or, uh, pe pe women pe generally who've been abused, uh, people with low self-esteem, um, a lot of carers. So because I had those links, I wanted to continue along that bin, but still have a business model as well. And I suppose one benefit of having it a community interest company is that you can apply for funding but you can also make money as well you can you know you can trade and train for profit and things like that as well it's 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 finding the balance um and i know some people set up a kick just so they can apply for funding uh which wasn't really what it was intended for but it doesn't matter so long as you are providing a community benefit a public benefit and genuinely doing something that supports the community to people, for me, to people who would not have been able to buy in your your professional services, um, and and so that that balance for me is exactly where I want to be. Absolutely, thank you. So, um, you were a CEO uh, struggling with your own stress, but at that time, it was not possible for you to lean on your own team because you wanted to set an example that you know you were doing well and you were. Uh, you could be trusted at your high level you didn't want to burden them with your own problems so can you tell me uh, what was that like for you but also how did you keep yourself sane at that time the funny thing is uh, the job itself wasn't what caused my stress at all I, I loved the job i was i was really good at the job and that so that didn't cause me stress it was a, a very personal issue uh so I, I was going through a life issue and it wasn't just at work. I think it was I've always been everybody's go to and in work. I was everybody's go to. And I'm going back about 12 to 14 years as well. Um, and it wasn't easy to say. I think generally in our society now we're saying, come on, people can talk about their mental health or their emotional struggles. I think back then um, we we weren't in that place. Um, and And so for me, it was. It was. Just, I don't think people were ready to hear it. We talk now about, oh, it's good to talk about mental health. It is, but I don't think people are always ready to hear it. And especially from someone who is their go-to to solve all of the problems that they had. Um, so how I got how I got through it. Um, I'm smiling because I was really, really struggling. I was really struggling, but I smile because um, I just. I, I would be at work up there, you know, sorting out the world and go home and curl up in a ball. And and I, and I just got desperate. So my mind, start, I started to come up with inventive little ways to get through um, moments. And and that was how I got through. And and I built on those. And and I just thought this this worked. Um and, and I started to keep using them and I just got better and better and stronger and stronger. And, and in the end, I thought, I'm going to share this with other people. And I did. And eventually I was doing it on the on the side. And then I went part time. And then eventually eight years ago, I set up the business because I, I knew that I had to do this. Um, and I've gone from there and never looked back, really. Love it. And, you know, what you're talking about there is the extreme resilience you know when people are coming home c crying hiding in a, a ball you know feeling so stressed out and so alone and isolated and then you're doing what you said going in getting on with your day doing an excellent job looking after your team it that must have been so difficult so it's great to hear that you had some tricks and skills that you taught yourself or some fun ways to cope. And I'm really looking forward to hearing about them and I hope you'll share one with us. Um, but I would love to ask, so you're a very well-read lady. You've, you've studied, you, you know, you've done your academic uh, study as well. Um, you've studied neuro-linguistic programming, psychology, neuroscience. Um, have you had a favorite? And uh, have you found that you've always enjoyed studying or has that been something you found later in life? I don't like study at all because one of one of my issues has always been all my life is I like information to be simple. And so and I never understood why everything had to be complicated. And so I always made things simple. 
and so I didn't go to university till I was in my 30s and um, I used to go to lectures and, and get all of these texts and think I haven't got a clue what they're talking about so I used to go I used to go to the, my local library and get the simple versions of everything and um, and and I would learn from the bottom up and then I, I, I would go back to university and say really all you're talking about is this and they'd say yeah I said well, why, why didn't you just say, why didn't you just say that um, so um, so so for me it isn't about study what I do is I read the complex to then turn everything um, to be simple and so my favorite things are when I design a technique now then I study the neuroscience so I can explain why it works then I, I link that with the psychology so to me to research is amazing uh, and, I, and I just constantly have light bulbs going on um, and it's bringing everything together in a, in a coherent format. So whilst I'm well read, um, in one sense, I read to understand so that I can help people. But I make everything, make everything simple. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm curious and I would like to know, you know, studying neurolinguistic programming, there is a reputation. Some people think that it's very new age or it's manipulation. Other people are really into it. In some cases, people are learning it as a sales technique. Uh, you know, in other cases, you, you learning it for crisis management or really helping people in coaching. So I'd love to know from your perspective, what do you think about neurolinguistic programming and how do you see it helping people? For me, for me, when I learned it, um, when I became a practitioner and a coach, what I realised was I'd, I'd always, I'd, I'd always had a natural leaning toward um, some of those those things that I'd learned. But I, I completely agree. Is it um, with you, Ashley? Is it? I find it awful that it can be used as a manipulative technique. The, the essence of it is to change the way that we that we think that then changes the way that our brain works. It changes our language and then it changes the way that we actually behave. Um, in essence, it, it's always a manipulation whenever we want to um, everything we do from from having young children and 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 the things we say to them, the things we do to them, we manipulate people all of the time. Children manipulate adults. The basis of NLP and the reason I think it's got some bad press for me, and I might have some NLP practitioners that differ with me, is it's now being used in sales, etc., because we're trying to get people on side to buy the product. If you're a practitioner or a therapist, you have to get people to be able to trust you. And so you build rapport through following a series of techniques. And once those people can trust us, we can then help them. Now, it's manipulation. It just so happens that it's manipulation for a positive purpose for the for the to be able to support the client. Now, the fact that it's out there, you've got people teaching people how to get people to fall in love with them. Um, which I think is wrong in sales it's 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 highly manipulative if it's always for the good of the client that is what makes the difference but let's be honest that is about people generally if we do what we do to help other people that's that's one thing if we do it to help ourselves um, and exploit people then it's not good so to me NLP is just like anything else in life it is the thing it's how it's used and it's all about everything is about integrity. And I think that's what makes the difference, actually. Absolutely. And it's a strategy, isn't it? It's just one tool in a toolkit of many, um, but a very powerful strategy. I think that what, what I've why I loved when I first did my diploma, what I loved about NLP is that it's actually very practical. It's not in essence, a talking therapy. It's quite a practical um, way of supporting people. 
to get them to think differently uh, about their behaviors and their thoughts. But for me, it was the practical aspect of it. And that fits with with my nature. Um, and so I don't always use it um, knowingly. I actually don't use it a lot. But when I look at my techniques, it's always underpins, I think, everything that I do. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so I would love to know, so you've got such a big, warm, beautiful smile that we see all the time for those of us who watch you on LinkedIn or on Facebook or watch your YouTube channel, which is brilliant. And it's a new thing. And I want you to just share a bit about that. But I just want to ask, you know, you have such big, warm hugs and you're just such a giving, warm person. But how do you keep doing that when you're having a tough time? Um. <sighs> When I'm having a tough time, do you mean, yeah, well, for me, I, d I don't tend to have tough times these days quite simply because I don't just teach my stuff. I am my stuff. I live my stuff. So so if I've got a problem, I use all of my techniques um, to handle them. So so I'm not I'm not perfect. You know, I'm not saying I never get fed up and I'm not saying I never get annoyed or angry or you know disheartened but then I'll do that for a while but then I use my techniques so for me um yeah it's it's knowing that whatever is going to happen to me I have the answer because I have techniques that I can use so for me that that that's what makes everything work i know that if i'm angry now i won't have to be angry in five minutes because i've got a technique for that well excellent so yeah i've got a technique for everything actually well i'm hoping you'll teach us one um in a little while um but i've got so many questions for you so uh do you have any favorite ways of looking after yourself your self-care so you've got these techniques and you've got, you know, um, you enjoy being practical. But do you have any things that you do to spoil yourself? Uh, oh, spoil. Yeah, I go walking. I go walking and um, I just love being out there. I I'm curbed a little bit at the moment, uh, but I get out there. I've been doing eight miles a day for a while. And, um, uh, and usually I like to be walking in the hills, but... Uh, Walking is my favorite thing. Uh, laughing, laughing is my, my, my very favorite thing. Um, and do, do you know this? This might sound weird, but it helps me. So I do my Facebook videos twice, twice a week, and um, I just love the fact that I'm doing those to help people. That nurtures me. That that nurtures my zest, if you like. Um, that inspires me to to do stuff. And when I put those videos out, and I get the feedback that I get, that is that's just that's looking after me. That that really is self care for me. Brilliant. I love that. Thank you for sharing it. And thank you for, for sharing how it nurtures your zest, which I love. And I would like to ask you something about that. So you've got a Facebook group and you share things in there and you chat to people. Um, and I wonder how long have you been doing that for? Because a lot of people are very scared of having these online conversations, putting themselves out there in front of the camera, because it is scary, you know, anyone could watch, anyone can tap in and tap out, and you don't know what they're thinking. So how long have you been doing that? Well, it's funny. It's funny because I've said for quite a while, oh, I'm scared of doing them. And then someone said to me, um, oh, I can't imagine you being scared of doing a video. And I went, I'm not scared of doing a video. I'm scared of the technology because I, I didn't know I, I didn't know what buttons to press and then I didn't and and then um someone taught I asked for help and someone taught me and um and so I just went for it and and I started and um so doing doing the videos was a lot of people have been asking me for such a long time Ashley as I teach my techniques oh you should do videos um and 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 I wanted to, and I'd really thought about what I wanted to get out there. So I started doing um, 
tips and little little techniques of and they're only two minutes long because I don't want to be boring. Um, and and then I started doing them on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So now I'm Monday and Friday, and Monday is top tip. But then what happened was something funny happened one day. So my Friday video, instead of me giving a top tip, I, I told this funny story. But as I told the story, I couldn't stop laughing about it. And then my the hits to, to the Facebook just went rocketed. And so I um the, the following week something else happened and I reported that and then it just came that it was now Feel Good Friday. <clears throat> and Friday now is just a funny video <laughs> of something that happened to me during the week that I, I just yeah, I just and, and people love it. People absolutely love them. And and I just think again, that's that's part of what inspires me to to do what I do so I don't know if I'm answering your questions here or not you know I'm just going off going off on a one no that you're doing very well and I'm so curious <laughs> there as well what you've said because I think a lot of us mask how we feel or we try to be perfect or what we think other people want us to be or what we should be and and what it seems to me that from what you're saying the times that you were most you is where people have responded the most and been more engaged or interested in what you're putting out there? I I honestly think, Ashley, that, that that's probably in, in my life is no matter what I've achieved, what I've done, now that I teach people what, what I teach, how to tackle stress in ways that are practical, and, and I make it humorous and and I have those skills and abilities to do that. It brings me alive. And so and I, and I don't want that to sound glib, but it does. And it's when I feel that that is when I am most me, when I'm I'm just all backed up by by knowledge and science and learning and experience. But I'm giving people things in a way that. I, I I know now because I've taught that many people the way that people like it and and so for me the being me is when I get that great response so hey if it works do it absolutely and it's that energy and that uniqueness and the story I love it and so I'm very excited to see uh you be your your you and so I would love to ask you before you teach us a stress busting technique um if you were trapped on a desert island so we have talking about stress we're talking about mental health about not coping it feels kind of weird to ask that desert island question because we're all cooped up so a lot of the questions that we would have asked like what would you do if you were stuck what would you take with you well a lot of us are stuck right now or safe or you know we have to think about how we phrase things and how we put them in our mind as well but if you were to be stuck on a desert island or at home with coronavirus how what is your one thing that you'd want to take with you what is your uh we've already discussed your superpower but what would be your your one thing that would supercharge you wine uh no um <laughs> Do you know, I think it would have to be the radio. Because, do you know, I find what I love about the radio is, I mean, constantly entertaining, but I love the fact that depending on what aspect of my personality in that moment um, is, I can listen to classic FM. Brilliant. I can also listen to Greatest Hits Radio or Alfie Joey on, on Metro or, you know, whatever I want, radio can provide that. Uh, and that's why it's never boring. I just think radio is just brilliant. I mean, a bit of Heart 80s, you know. You can have a party on your own if you listen to Heart 80s. So for me, yeah, I could be on a desert island having a party. I mean... If I could take wine as well, I'd take wine. But me, me and the radio, yeah, we can have a, <laughs> we can have a great time. 
I love that. And I, I hope that you'd be on a an island where you could make wine if you needed to and have your yeah. radio. That would be I great. Would. <laughs> exactly. So can you teach us one of your stress busting top tips? I know that they're super secret, but would you share one with us? Well, do you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got I've got so many, but I think the one that I would want to give you for now for people to cope in this really strange time is is my, my absolute simplest and it is about taking a deep breath one just taking a deep breath and and I'm sure there are people thinking really that's it Gillian take a big deep breath I know how to do that but the thing is you see a lot of the time we take a big deep breath out of a sense of resignation when it's our our brain leading us you know so something happens and the first thing we do is we might go you know I think I'm going to kill somebody in a minute um this big deep breath is where we put ourselves in control because most of the time we we are doing things and thinking things, carrying out actions without consciously thinking about it. So our reactions to situations. So right now, when you're cooped up in the house or, um, you know, in close proximity to other people, which let's be honest, you'd have to be saintly for that not to get on your nerves, um, is is people will say things, people will do things. And, and if we're feeling frustrated, the chances are we would say something that might lead to something negative, then a negative conversation, what have you, or something happens and it would lead us to an overthinking. If we stop and take a breath, a nice, just one big deep breath on purpose, that is the thing on purpose. And if you say to yourself as you do that, I'm in control, in your head, just say to yourself, I am in control. What happens actually is it stops that automatic reaction that guaranteed would have been negative. And it puts you in a position of control and it gives you a two second gap that has taken the sting out of the situation. And I have taught this to, to thousands of people and especially children don't know what to do when their parent takes a big deep breath. I've had people say, We've stopped arguing in our house because now we take a big deep breath. So whatever the negative behavior that you would normally do, which is reactive, you just take a big deep breath and then you go into responsive behavior. It changes what happens in your brain. It takes your brain from reactive mode to rational thinking mode. One breath, one breath. Honestly, it makes such a massive difference. So the next time something happens and you want to say something, take a breath and you can diffuse so many situations um and having taught it so many times I, I can't tell you the difference that it makes that it makes to people um and i love it when people report back uh, how they've used it and um, to say yeah we just we just have less arguments or i have less negativity or whatever brilliant brilliant technique I love that. Thank you for sharing. It makes me think of the chimp paradox, which is one of my favorite books, because that changed my life. Uh, you know, if you're trying yeah. to get out of the same bad habits or patterns yeah. or yes. um, getting in the same arguments and then you just kind of like, why does this keep happening? I just don't get it. I think realizing yeah. that we have choices is really powerful. I think I think for me, actually, I mean, I look, yes, love the chimp paradox and and that that learning. That's my kind of thing is, oh, learning how your brain works. And so we know that um, if we can get a different part of our brain to work and that's the essence of, of most of my techniques is about putting you in control of you. So chimp paradox is great. If but if you are up for reading a book like that or having to think in those ways. Whereas when I teach my stuff, I'm saying, right, we need to get you your brain from your normal reactive behavior into rational thinking behavior. 
I don't want to have to give people a book to read because especially when I'm when I'm teaching people who might be highly anxious or worried or stressed the last thing they want is to read something and for a lot of people they might not ever think about reading uh, a book like that for me when I can say here's a technique that you can use in one second that can take you from that reactive negative brain into control thinking brain then it's take a big deep breath so for me that is the essence of what I do I take the information that's complex make it simple and give people an action to take because when we are stressed anxious worried any kind of negative emotion the thing that works is to take an action and when we take an action that empowers us and so that's why everything I do is about being action focused. So, yeah, that's why it works. Thank you. I think that's very interesting. Um, and I'm glad you said that, because actually, if you are feeling miserable, if you're sad, if you're anxious, if you're down, if you, you know, really are in a desperate state the last thing you want to do as you say is read a book or make the time to have to learn a new technique but if you can just do something it's much more powerful so i think you're right there um so i'm wanting to know you have a special surprise for us and i wondered if you're ready to do that now what which one's or, that one so Before. i Yes, I would love oh. to hear your poem. And I'd like to know, where did that idea come from? So what made you think about doing that poem, but also to, to share it, you know, uh, and why are you doing poetry? You know, what got you doing that and thinking about it? Oh, right. It's quite a lot in there. Um, when I was young, I discovered one day that my mum liked to write poetry and uh, I got up in the middle of the night one night I don't know why and uh, my mum was just sat and, and I said what are you doing and she said I'm just writing some poetry and she showed me this poem and then when she passed away many many years later um, I found all of her poems and I remember this poem that she'd uh, written in the middle of the night when I was probably about 12 and um, and, and I'd started to write poetry as well um, and usually when something happened it would be quite funny uh, so so I've got this little thing where I love to write poems anyway I'd started to um, during the lockdown I was doing a Facebook live for uh, parents of children with mental health issues and um, I wanted to recite the poem Invictus and I did, but what I'd done was, knowing I was going to recite Invictus, which is my favourite poem, I thought, um, hmm, I might write my own version of Invictus. And I did, and I did it in five minutes. And I loved it, and they loved it. Uh, and I started, so I just started. So the last few weeks, I've been writing loads of poems. And then uh, Michael Owen of Angelfish, um, who set up the Free Day Initiative, uh, he put out a post called um, Pancakes and Yorkshire Puddings and, and how you take the same mix uh, and you can make different things, pancakes and Yorkshire puddings. And, and I thought, oh, I, I like that concept of things were in a different, it feels like a completely different era now, but things have changed so much um, that if we can, and I know a lot of people don't like the word, Michael used it, if we can pivot, so it's saying these are the skills that I've got and I'm going to use them differently. And so this was the um, the, the inspiration for this poem. So shall I recite it? OK, right. <clears throat> Please same do. Ingredient, same ingredients, different recipe. Things have changed. It's gone belly up, but you're still the same old you. Your current skill sets now invalid. You feel useless. Well, boo hoo. You're going to have to move with the times, not to be a square peg in a round hole. You can't sit on your backside and think it's all just rigmarole. You can't be an ostrich or hope for a distraction. Hope is a strategy if it's backed up by action. So dig deep and remember those old skills you had in style. 
change your LinkedIn from business boring to making people smile. You know you can do it, but you'll have to battle your fears. Alternatively, you can sit quivering like a jellyfish for the next few years. It's in you. You know it. But it creates a new anxiety. Don't worry. That's normal for the whole of our society. It's just it's not just you, my friend. Everyone's rethinking how to find your own groove and not give in to the panicking. Accept what you can't change. Don't just sit there defeated. Focus on the positives and what you can do to beat it. There was a time in your life when you couldn't wipe your own bum, but you learned we all had to. That's the general rule of thumb. The answers are there, mate. You've just got to let them in. Stand straight, shoulders back, head up and breathe. And again. So my message is you're still the same old you. Just broaden your borders. Bring those skills and abilities you can offer this new world order. Just think how you can use what you've got to make a difference. And now consider where you could be three years hence. You've got this, my friend. Now summon your reserves because you're a good one. And remember, the ingredients for a pancake are the same as for a Yorkshire pudding. There you go. I had to purposefully uh, clap quietly because my mic's so loud. <laughs> but I love that. I think it's really powerful. It's very inventive, very creative. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. And you know, it's so funny because it makes me think of when I first moved to England and the first time I had a Yorkshire pudding, I was just like, what is this weird thing? I just didn't, I didn't understand what it was all about, but I, I do enjoy a Yorkshire pudding now. So it's, it's a really big thing, uh, you know, in the UK on a Sunday roast. So thank you for that. That was beautiful. I do like your quote as well. Uh, well, my quote that I've taken from there, the most strong one for me is that hope is a strategy when backed by action. That is a very powerful quote. Um, yeah. Yes, it's it's, it's funny because I did notice that you put it on your LinkedIn on, on the advert for, for this. And I thought, oh, she took my quote. And that's great. Um, do you know what's funny is I learned many years ago um, and, and I know it's quite a, a, a well-known um, thing to say that hope isn't a strategy, you know. Um, and I've often said, you know, well, hope's not a strategy you can rely on. But when I really thought about it, actually, it is. Without hope, we've got nothing. But action is what we get there by taking an action. So if you just sat hoping and wishing, well, that will get you nowhere. But but if along the way you, you take actions to get you to what you hope will happen, then that's the answer. So as soon as I, it's funny that you should take that one because as soon as I wrote that line, I haven't thought about it, I loved it. And and other people have quoted it since as well. So, um, so yeah, I love it as well. Thank you right. so much for your lovely poem. I really enjoyed that. And you've got more poems coming out. So where can people find them? Where can they find out more about you? Well, um, I post them on LinkedIn. I've been challenged to do one a week. Um, so I post them on LinkedIn. I also have, um, I'm on YouTube. I produce a YouTube video every week uh, of top tips. Uh, oh, no, I haven't put my poems on there yet. Poems are not on there, but but I do have the YouTube. Um, if you go into YouTube and then feel good, CIC. Um, and I do sometimes put them on my Facebook, which is Feel Good CIC. But mainly I put them on on LinkedIn. Great. Well, I think it's a public service for you to put them on YouTube since they are cheering up so many people. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think they're great. And I'm so pleased to see you being so creative at a time where we need creativity more than ever. Um, so just before we go, what is your number one word to nurture your zest? Oh, laughter. Laughter. Because I, I, if I can just ex explain something is 
when I do my Facebook videos on a Friday and I say something funny has happened, so I tell people about it. Sometimes the things that happen, Ashley, are not actually funny, but I make them funny. So I think it's in the uh, finding something in a situation that um, that I turn into funny. Have I got time to tell you a story and give you an example? Right. Go for okay. it. Well, um, I think that th th this one has a few messages in it. So um, recently I was lying in the bath and I love a lovely bath. So I was lying in the bath and I like to put my head under the water so the water comes above my ears. Now, when that happens and you get the air out of your ears, all noises are magnified. So I was lying in the bath and um, I, and my heart started to go boom, 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 boom. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm having a heart attack. And I mean, I genuinely believed in that moment I, I was having a, a heart attack. So the great thing is I've got a whole range of techniques. So what did I do? I took a big, I said to myself, you're having a heart attack. You've got to now take control, breathe. So I took a big, deep breath. I am in control. Then I started to say in my head, right, you've got to get out of this bath. You can't drown. You've got to get out of the bath. You're having a heart attack. And genuinely, I believed I was having a heart attack. So I thought, right, come on, breathe again, be in control, get out of the bath. Now, so far, not so funny. However, then the boom, boom, boom stopped. And what had happened was the bathroom is above the kitchen and I'd put the washer on. So I was lying with my head under the water and the, the washing machine went on spin. So all I could hear was boom, 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 thinking I was having a heart attack. Um, so, so then I realized, now, that's not funny. Afterwards, it was flipping hilarious, the fact that I thought I was having a heart attack and it was actually the washer. What was brilliant was I used my coping strategy, my little technique of take control. And I love the fact that I did that, even when I thought I was having a genuinely thought I was having a heart attack. Some people even said, but, but did you not realize that you didn't have pain? Uh, my brain was in reactive mode. I'm having a heart attack. What do I do? I breathe. I take control. But when I then told it on the Friday as a story for Facebook, honestly, I just laughed and laughed. I thought it was hilarious. The fact that there I was thinking I was having a heart attack, lying in a bath, and it was the Blum and Washer on spin cycle. So, so what I'm saying is I just take stuff that happens and I find the funny in it. Um, even when essentially it's not funny, but it is. <laughs> but I think as well, that's the really important message because it's about perception is not always our reality. You know, it's not always the truth. What we see is sometimes hysterical. And we just, if we could only realise what's really there, it's not as scary. But that was, that was where the take of the big deep breath and eventually I would have realised I wasn't having a heart attack. I love the fact that I took control of me when when you're in a situation that had the potential to be massively stressful, um, I love the fact that I was just calm in a crisis, <laughs> which is brilliant. It is brilliant. And it's so nice to see you laughing at yourself. And I think humor is so important. Laughter is a brilliant one word to nurture your zest. Be because of the Internet and the quality it's probably best we call it a day there. But thank you yeah. so much for being a guest. It's been wonderful chatting to you. Really enjoyed it. I'm going to kick you out the studio now. Well, our homes now. But we will see you soon. Thank you very much. Take care. Oh. Thank you so much for listening to Note to Your Zest. It was wonderful to have you watching the show. Uh, so this Thursday, we will have uh, Nicola Jane Little, who will be joining us from Mint Business Club. Nicola uh, is a business founder, a community builder, a speaker. So you'll get to hear all about her, her journey to starting Mint and becoming an award-winning uh, community. And we'll hear how she likes to um, look after herself and how you can nurture your zest. 
So if you have any questions or if you'd like to drop me a message, please contact me, um, Ashley at nurtureyourzest.com. It's been great to see you tonight and thanks for listening. Bye. You've been listening to Nurture Your Zest. You can find us online on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Nurture Your Zest. If you've liked today, please subscribe. You can also leave us a review if you're feeling extra kind. Today's podcast has been made available through the kind sponsorship of TL Multimedia and That Branding Company. We look forward to catching up with you again soon as you learn to nurture your zest. Thank you.